Well, time for another response video and in this case it is necessary because it has more than 200,000 views and nearly nobody seems to have noticed the errors in the video. Furthermore, unlike my previous response video about the machine guns, the topic of strategic bombing is way more problematic and crucial due to its larger influence on the war and ongoing political debates in Europe. For a start, due to some people claiming that I may be affected due to my Austrian background, my main source on the Battle of Britain for this response video is Richard's Overy Battle of Britain, Myth and Reality. For those who don't know, Richard Overy is a well-known British historian who currently is a professor at the University of Exeter. For the parts where I argue against the very positive and uncritical portrayal of the German forces, I use texts from German military historians, which I also use when I argue about the effectiveness of the Allied bombing, which was certainly more effective than portrayed in the extra credits video. By the way, I don't claim that I am independent nor objective because those are really strong and quite unrealistic claims unless someone is still living in the 19th century. Of course I aim at producing objective content, but I think it is more of an ongoing process than a state that someone can reach. Now I fully recognize that extra history has a different approach towards history and also a quite different presentation style, but it crossed far too many lines with the strategic bombing video. I will only discuss the gravest errors, and those are the following. First, two times in the video they basically repeat German wartime propaganda and state them as facts. Second, basically the video deals only with the Battle of Britain and some terror bombing, instead with the crucial strategic bombing campaigns that happened after 1940. Which leads to the third point, namely completely missing that certain aspects of the Allied bombing campaign were very effective and actually did have a crucial influence on the war. These misrepresentations can be easily used by various politically motivated persons for their causes and due to the current events in Europe, this topic will be a matter of debates more often. So let's get started with the propaganda that is presented as a fact in the video. It begins around the first minute when it's stated, One small island stood together against the greatest military force the world had ever known. Now let's make one thing clear, the German armed forces, the Wehrmacht, was not the greatest military force the world has ever known. Especially not in summer 1940. During the Battle of France in 1940, the German army consisted of 10 tank and 6 motorized divisions. Yet the brunt of the forces were 61 infantry divisions on foot with mostly horse-drawn equipment. These divisions were fully operational, unlike the 66 divisions that were not fully operational. Although the number of tank and motorized division changed later in the war, sometimes this was also due to having less tanks in one division than in 1940. So in general the German army throughout the whole war had a severe lack of motorized and mechanized equipment. Furthermore the term greatest has a very positive connotation. Now I am not a subscriber to the German guild faction, but nor am I a subscriber to the German forces were great faction. Both of these groups are pretty similar in their narrow-mindedness, their lack in nuance and their oversimplification of complex matters. History is not a Che Guevara t-shirt, thus its portrayal needs more than just two colors. The second time extra credit basically repeated wartime propaganda was when they mentioned the decision of Hitler to order large-scale attacks on London after the British bombed Berlin. In this case I will just quote Professor Overy. The decision to launch attacks on London rested with Hitler, but all the preparation was in place long before. Additionally he points out, the raids on Berlin may have affected the timing of the decision, but even this is doubtful. At most they allowed the German leaders what Goebbels described as an alibi. Now since we settled the unintentional propaganda, let's move to the next part, the misleading title or mismatching content. The main message of the video is basically terror bombing doesn't work. Well, but the title is Resource War Number 4 Strategic Bombing. Strategic bombing and terror bombing are not the same. Furthermore, the video basically covers nothing about the attacks on resources or the distribution networks that were needed to transport them. 
Something that should be the core of the video, because the Allied bombing attacks against German fuel production and transport networks were very effective during the later stages of the war and had a significant impact on the German ability to wage war. The failure to address these points is quite problematic and leads us to the next part, notably neglecting crucial lessons and developments of the Allied bombing campaigns. The most important points that were reconnected are First, in World War II strategic bombing was to a large degree still in its infancy and barely understood. This is very similar to the development of artillery combat in World War I, which went from complete ineptness to developing principles that are used up to this day. Second, the video doesn't mention how effective the strategic bombing against the fuel and transport networks were in limiting the Germans' ability to wage war. This information is crucial to reach a more balanced point of view concerning the strategic bombing campaigns, because they were not just terror bombing nor solely focused on military targets. It is a highly controversial and difficult topic in itself, even without simplifying the matter or political views thrown into the mix. To give you a glimpse on both the ineffectiveness and effectiveness of the strategic bombing performed by the Allied forces, let's take a look at the following remark of the German military historian Horst Bog. One of the most decisive Allied successes in the bombing campaigns, the crippling of the German fuel supply, was achieved with only about 0.6% of the bombs dropped on Europe and about 1.3% of the bombs dropped on Germany. Yet to achieve this decisive goal in the last months of the war, it required years of experience and preparations also in other areas of warfare. I will cover the air war in further detail in the future, but for now I hope this addresses the most crucial points. Now extra credits. I know that errors can happen. I made quite some of my own, but in this case there were far too many and crucial ones, especially considering your large amount of subscribers and the extra spotlight you got from Paradox. I think you should at least rename the video on why terror bombing didn't work or something along those lines. Because neither strategic bombing nor the resource war are covered in your video. Also maybe add some annotation to those parts that are basically reproducing wartime propaganda. Thank you for watching, please like, comment, share and subscribe. And See you next time.